So in today's video, we are going to be looking at floor shadows using the soft brush tool. This is the technique that I use on all my pieces for floor shadows. Um, I've done a previous video on shadows, but I didn't actually do a talk. Um, it was um, My mic wasn't working at the time. And there have been a few requests for me to actually talk through the process rather than just a video with some music in the background. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to get the brush tool, come over to your brush panel and choose the soft brush. We're then going to make sure that the flow is down to 8%. And then we're going to make sure that the roundness is around 10 to 14% depending on um, the type of render that you're using. Make sure that you've got black selected as your foreground color. And then we're going to zoom in. And then we're just going to start clicking. And you slowly start to see that there's a shadow appearing. You don't want to go too dark in first instance because as you grow the brush out, it'll start painting over what we've already painted. So the, the light direction is coming more from this direction. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna paint out this way with the shadow. So as we increase the brush size and start clicking a couple of times, we'll start to see that the shadow starts to grow from the inwards outwards. And we wanna go quite large just to create a floor. Kinda gives a nice effect. And then if we go back in, just want to paint this a bit darker. Like that. Then we're going to repeat for the, the feet. We're going to start right underneath his foot. Not too dark at first. And then we're going to start to grow out. Uh, and I mean you can go in and you can change the fill slightly if it's if it in the end is too dark. I think that looks about right there. And then I just want to add a separation from the background to the foreground. I'm just going to increase the size on this. Not too big. Put it underneath the current shadows just to give some kind of floor. So the next part in this video, I'm going to talk through how I do my lighting on the player. Um, this varies depending on what kind of piece I'm doing, but seeing as we're just doing a very basic one, I'm just going to use curves um, as adjustment layers. So the first one we're going to do, we're going to do the, um, the shadows. So we're going to choose a curve layer and we're going to change the blend mode to multiply. And then we're going to clip this to the object itself. Then we're going to come to the mask and we're going to invert it so that we can paint on only the areas that we want to show. And we're going to increase the flow back up to about 90%. Make sure that you've got the soft brush selected. And then we're going to come to the render. I'm going to start painting over where the shadows would be. So we need white. It's the foreground color. And we're just going to paint over the areas where the shadows appear on the player. This process is a lot easier if you have a drawing tablet 
Um, you can increase and decrease using the, the pen pressure. At the moment, my, my tablet is currently out of use, so we're just using the mouse at the moment. So you might want to reduce the flow slightly if, if you are using the mouse. Now we're going to add some light in, so same curves layer, create clipper mask, change the blend mode to screen, and then invert the clipper mask, and then we're just going to paint over where the areas are a bit lighter. Like I said, if you've got a drawing tablet, this is a lot easier process. And sometimes I will add another curves layer, clip it, and I will change it to luminosity. This way you can slightly adjust you know, the lights and the shadows without affecting colors. So we're just going to bring the shadows down slightly and bring the lights up. So this is a before and after that shot. And then if we take them all off, I'm going to add the shadows, add the light in, and then just the luminosity adjustment as well. So now we're going to add a hue saturation. So you're going to bring the saturation down slightly. But there. And then if we go so this is the before and then this is the after so now we're going to use camera or filter just to do some color correction on the subject now because it's a smart object that means we can we can make changes and if we don't like it once we get towards the final piece we can go back and alter these so that it, it doesn't overpower the rest of the piece so let's bring up camera raw filter. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to alter the light in slightly. So we're going to bring the highlights down and the shadows just to make it look a bit more natural. We're going to increase the light slightly and take down the blacks. And we're going to decrease the contrast about halfway backwards to about there. Most of my pieces I like to use a bit of clarity and texture. So we're going to increase the clarity by 40 and the texture by 20. I'm going to bring the vibrance up 40 and then with saturation I normally, if I put it at 40 then I'll do minus 20 just to balance it out. I'm going to add a little bit of sharpening, not too much, so that we don't start to lose any of the quality of the picture. And then we're going to use the calibration RGB primary filters just to alter a few different skin tones and to bring the purples and the blues out um, in a, well, say blue, it's more of a, a teal. So we're going to shift the blue primary slightly to the left. It starts to bring out slightly more red on the skin. We're going to change the green primary slightly towards the right, not too much, but we're going to decrease the saturation as well. 
and then the red as you can see if you move it that way and then it, it totally changes the reds in the picture so we don't want to change this one too much so we're going to bring it down and increase the saturation on that one and then we're going to kind of color mixer and with our, our purples and magentas we're slightly going to move the luminance up just to make them a bit brighter same with the skins so we want to bring the reds up the oranges and the yellows I'm just going to increase the aquas just to bring the, the greens out a bit more. Then we're going to go to curve. I'm slightly going to bring the shadows up. <clears throat> and the light dens itself. And then if we turn the camera off filter on and off, you can see the slight adjustments that have been made. But because it's a smart object, we can go back and change the smart filter at any time. Now we're just going to finish up this piece. We can add some background color. Um, it's a very basic piece just for explanation of how I use the subject um, for lighting, shadows, and color correction. So we're just going to add a solid color And all we're going to do is draw across here. And then we're going to change this color to pink. Then we're just going to add some text. So we're going to do I'm going to change this to a font that we like. And there you go that's a very basic piece from here you can merge all the layers to create a smart object and then i would add more camera raw adjustments just for the final i mean i've got some presets set i've got one called it's called make it pop which i use quite a lot on all my my pieces so we're going to go with that one and we're just going to go in and change contrast slightly. And I'm pretty happy with that piece overall. I mean, we could bring the, the blacks down slightly so the shadows aren't so dark. Increase the inert slightly. There you go. So that's before my final camera raw adjustments. And because I've saved as a smart object, when if I wanted to go back and make any changes in the piece, I can just simply hide this. Say now we wanted to have a bit more text. Bring this up. Change the fill so it's empty. Add a shadow to it, add a stroke to it, sorry. Perhaps add a little drop shadow too. We won't do that. I 
can then merge all these layers, convert it to a smart object, and then just copy the, the final result that I wanted before onto this layer. And I don't have to go through making all the changes again. So say now you've you've designed this piece in a four by five ratio, but you also want to make it available as a wallpaper. I simply create a new Photoshop file with some artboards. So we're going to create an iPhone eight, and then we're going to add another one for an iPhone X, and then I simply do a place linked. of the Photoshop file then when you make any changes to this file it'll carry over to your wallpapers so let's make a slight adjustment we are going to We're going to remove the text on this. Then we're going to press save. Then we're going to go back here, and as you can see, these have updated. So then the easiest way to do this would just be to export the artboards. So you can do this by file export and export as or artboards to files.